Um, so, we're not doing that yet. But I'm leaving it on now so that when I want it, it won't just give me a half of like last time. Um, but I'll do that very soon. So, uh, one thing I want to point out last time, I wrote down the series for e to the x wrong because I wasn't paying attention. Um, it was sort of morally right. Zero. 
And now if I take the derivative, see it's already awful. So here, I'll use the computer to take the derivatives. So since I don't want to do all the work, I will just ask it to do all the work. This stuff is for later. Okay, so let's go down a little bit. I want to take the derivative of x cubed e to the x squared over 2 with respect to x. So it's that. Now I can, I want the derivative of that with respect to x. Notice that the, the x, so here's f, you can't see this, can you? Okay, so f is there. This is f prime of 0, but see that's 0 because I have an x squared x squared up. f double prime of 0, this is all 0 because we have x's. f triple prime of 0 is 6 e to the 1 half x squared plus a bunch of crap that's 0. So f triple prime of 0 is 6. Uh, but that means that this coefficient is 1 because this coefficient, so I have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus the third derivative divided by 3 factorial. So the first non-zero term in the series is 6 divided by 3 factorial x cubed. So there's a lot of zeros. And then I get this. And then the next term is 0 because there's an x in everything. But when I take the derivative of that, I get another term without an x here. And so that is 60 e to the 1 half x squared. So that's another 60. It's not another 60, it's a 60. So there'll be 0. And then I'll get 60 over 5 factorial x to the fifth. Well, 5 factorial over 60. I mean, 60 over 5 factorial is a half. So I this term. And so on. You can do this, but it's awful. Maybe you can figure out this general form. So it's much easier to take something that you know that's simple and combine it to get other stuff. Okay, well, this is not why I brought the computer here. So that was a little uh, side trip. So what I was trying to do last time when the computer fought with me, actually the computer was fine, it was just a projector. Um, so, well, let's, let's look at the series for, say, e to the x. So there's the first spot. Can you see this? Oh, let me lower the right. So can people see that pretty much kind of sort of? All I care about is the graph. So forget about everything here. Just, this is the series for e to the x, just the first five terms. If I want to look at, compare, well, let's see. So here's the series for e to the x. And okay. So that's the first term of the series. So, sorry, let me jump here.
Let's just look at the first one. Okay. So this is just <coughs> e to the 0. If I change this and I add in, say, the first two terms, well, let's just take the first three terms, 1 plus x, let's, go, let's just go quadratic first. So if I go to the first quadratic term, this is a constant of 1. This is 1 plus x, which is the tangent line, is 0. This parabola here, which is starting to look a lot like e to the x, is 1 plus x, 1 plus, well, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. If I go to three terms, that's the purple one. It starts to hug the graph a little more. If I go to, say, 13 terms, you get some horrible looking polynomial. Uh, let me actually just do the 13. And you can barely tell the difference out to negative 5. Right, the green curve, you can't even see the red curve because the green curve is sitting on top of it. Can I make these thicker? Can you see them in the back? You don't care? Okay. I can make them thicker. So we can see, actually, let's just see the convergence here. So each of these colored lines is more and more terms of the Taylor series, and it's starting to hug the graph of e to the x more and more and more. If we play the, the same game with the sign instead of the exponential, maybe I'll only do five. So this, this is the graph of the sign. And you can see more and more terms are starting to hook on and get closer and closer to the graph of the exponential. If instead of doing 5, I do 15. It starts to really match up. Maybe there's too many going on here, so let's do just the last and left. So here's the sine curve here. And these are, this is the uh, degree 12 Taylor polynomial, the degree 14, the degree 16, and so on. So they, they, they start to match more and more on a wider and wider range. So let me do one other case. If you remember, this guy converges, the infinite series converges for all x, for both of these ones that I did. But if we do, say, the log of 1 plus x, so let me do the same thing here. The log of 1 plus x. Yeah. Do the same business for the log of 1 plus x.
Um, if I start taking more and more terms, so instead of taking the degree 5, let's take 50 terms of the Taylor series. It matches really well and then it just falls off. And that's because the Taylor series only converges between here and here. So you can see maybe y minus n minus n. It matches really well, but then it just falls off. So this bump is the best that the Taylor series can do. And if you try and go beyond one, even though the graph is defined, the Taylor series is no good because it doesn't converge. Even if I take, this is the degree 50 series. Let me just show you what I'm doing. This polynomial. So that's the polynomial that I'm trying to approximate the log with. It converges really well when it converges and outside it's just garbage. So. Okay? So that was what I wasted, I don't know, a quarter of the class trying to make work last time. Any, any questions or? Um, Notice that also we don't have to do this stuff at zero. So for example, suppose I wanted to approximate the log of 3 by a series. I could use this same series, but expand it not at zero. Expand it at 3. I mean, not take 50 terms to emphasize that it's based at 3. Um, and notice that, well, here. Okay. So here I'm taking a Taylor series centered at x equals 3, not at x equals 0. This is a Taylor series, not a Florin series. So the series that I'm doing here is centered at x equals 3. And it looks more like that. Right, so I'm expanding my series here around x equals 3. And the same kind of stuff happens with the log. It still falls off if I take lots of terms. So instead of 5 terms, let's take 50 terms. It still falls off, but it falls off between here and here because it converges around x equals 3 with a radius of convergence that reaches all the way out to about 7. Really beyond 7. Okay? So the radius of convergence is important. It's not just some garbage that we make you do if you want to use this. Yeah? No. So what the radius is really doing is saying something weird happens at the edge where I can converge. Maybe that weird thing is not you know, a real number. So the log, for example, the, this function that we're doing, log of 1 plus x, blows up when x is minus 1. So this series can't converge this way beyond x equals minus 1 because this function becomes infinite. And just because of the way series works, it can't go any further this way either. So it will blow up. It blows up here at minus 1, which is 4 away from 3. So the series will also not work well beyond x equals 7. If I move over and center it at 10, I should get something that's good between minus 1 and 1. Because something happens at minus 1 that hurts it. Now there's other, there are other series where the thing that goes wrong actually happens in a complex plane. So the function is nice for all real numbers, but the series can't go very far because it sees the complex numbers. This is, we won't talk about that. Okay, any other questions about this stuff? Okay, so I'm going to put away this stuff now. 
this off. Go back to. Okay. Um, right. So, what is it that I'm still doing? I, I lost track. I'm sorry. That's a little bit of notes. That's not my notes. That's my notes. Okay. So, what I want to do, we, we know series for e to the x. We also know series for the sine. Uh, I guess. Right. You know, a Maclaurin series for e to the x, for the sine of x. We know the series for the cosine of x by taking the derivative of the sine or deriving it again. We know the series for the log 1 plus x, which is really the Taylor series for the log base at 1. But, okay. We also know the geometric series. It's like the minus. Um, but, you know, we'd like to be able to extend this repertoire a little bit. Um, so, what I'd like to do now is a series for 1 plus x to the k. k is some number, so actually just remind you, if I want 1 plus x to the fourth power, you know this. Well, maybe you know this. You know this? You should know this. This is 1 plus 4x plus, uh-oh, what, what's the next term here? 4 choose 2 is 2 times 8. Why can't I do this? Uh, 4 times 3 over 2, 6. 6x squared plus 4x cubed plus x to the 4. And in general, 1 plus x to the n is 1 plus n choose 2x plus n choose 3 is cubed, stuff, 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 n choose n minus 1, x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n, where n choose, I should use k because I'm use k at the most, n choose j is n factorial over j factorial n minus j. You've all seen this before, I think. Has anyone not seen, not seen this before? Did you guys actually like go to high school and stuff? <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, so this is something that you're supposed to have seen, but you haven't. So this is called the binomial theorem. And it tells us how we can expand powers of binomials, a plus b to the nth power. So this is also related to something you may have seen called Pascal's triangle. This is just Pascal's triangle. These numbers are the numbers you get out of Pascal's triangle. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 8, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4. Just written in a slightly different way. So if I go to the tenth line Pascal tri Pascal's triangle and I want the third entry, then that value will be 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial divided by 7 factorial. Okay? So this is just a true fact that you should know, but I guess you don't. Um, but so notice that this looks a lot, so, so let me just write that again in a slightly more compact location. 1 plus x, and instead of using n here, I'm going to use k. So this is the 
sum from n equals 0 to k of n choose k x to the n. Right? I'm just, I'm just rewriting. I don't know why I switched from n to k, so let's just put it back in case. You don't have to change your notes.
When will I stop? K minus n, right? Here I stop from k minus n plus 1. I won't use k minus n. K minus n minus 1 is where I stop. And then I have an x, sorry, 1. No one told me that I switched. Then I have a 1 plus x to the k minus n power. Right? If I take the derivative 12 times, I will have 12 times 11 times 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, until I get down to k minus 11. And then I will be able to get k minus 12 power. Oh, and I plug in 0 here, I just get this jump. So what does this mean? This means we know the series. Right? So my series. For 1 plus x to the k power is going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 divided by 2 times x squared, f triple prime of 0 divided by 3 times x squared times x cubed, blah 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 blah. But we know the formula for all of these, yeah. Well, it's k minus n minus 1, which is k minus n, but then give 1 back, so it's a plus 1. So that means that the series in this case is 1 plus k times x plus k times k minus 1 over 2 times x squared plus k times k minus 1, k minus 2, over 3 factorial, x cubed, plus 0.11. You want to write this in summation notation. But we have 1 plus x to the k is Start at zero. We go as long as we need to. Uh, one, sorry. K, K minus one, K minus two. Keep going. Stop just before K minus n. Divide by n factorial and multiply by x to the n. So that's sort of a mouthful. So we can use the same notation. We can write it uh, a little shorter. Where here we have to change the meaning of k choose n a little bit to allow for fractions. So here we're going to take k choose n to be. this, even if k is a fraction, or even if k is negative. And if n is bigger than k, it's 0. Okay? So this agrees with the previous meaning there, because what does this n minus j do? It kills off all the terms. Sorry, my n Let me make them match. So this k minus n factorial kills off everything here. 
in the k factorial, and the n is still here. So this is the same as that if k is a whole number bigger than n. If k is a whole number smaller than n, just make it be zero so we're done. And if k is a fraction, well, this notion, k choose n, which is choose n things out of a pile of k things, doesn't make sense to say choose n things out of a pile of log 5 things. I don't even know what log 5 things means, or what 3 and a half things means. Well, that makes some amount of sense. But we just define it to be this, and it agrees completely. And as we see, we get a series. And the series allows us to do things, so this is called the binomial series. This series allows us to do things like write a series for 1 plus x, the square root of 1 plus x, or uh, the cube root, and so on. So this captures the series for fractional power three. Okay. Um, maybe I should do an example. So it's sort of in the same vein as this. If we wanted to write a series for one over the square root of 9 plus x, suppose I want a series for this. I can do this without having to take all of the derivatives and go through all of the work. I can just turn this in to something that looks like this by a little bit of algebra. What algebra would I do? You don't have to tell me all the algebra. What k would I use? Yeah. Negative 1 half. So this is 9 plus x to the negative 1 half. Well, this is still not the same as that. I need a 1 there. But to get a 1 there, no problem. I can just divide by 9. The same kind of trick we do when we were doing trig substitutions. So I can make this 1 plus x over 9 to the minus 1 half. But then I have a 9. Let me leave it inside for a minute. So now this is getting closer. And now I can take, well, I know what 9 to the minus 1 half is. That's the third. It's the square root of 1 over the square root of 9. So this is 1 third times 1 plus x over 9 to the minus 1 half. And now, this is in the same form that I can use the binomial series for. I think of this as my u. And I do 1 plus u there. And so my series is, well, let me just, should I write it? I'll write it in some notation. So it's one third of what I get, where I use an x over 9 instead of an x there. So I have minus 1 half choose n, which really means that list of terms, which I'll write out in a second. Uh, x over 9 to the end. Right? which would be just to write out a few terms to emphasize. Just back to the third out because it's annoying. So this will be minus one half the first term. Then my next term is, uh, well here we have minus one half minus one. So this is minus a half times minus three halves divided by Times x. Wait, you need 
divided by nothing. Did I do something wrong here? Yes, I did. Sorry. Try that again. 1 minus a half x plus minus a half minus 3 halves over 2 x squared plus minus a half minus 3 halves minus 5 halves over 3 factorial x cubed plus blah 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 blah. Okay? I don't know. Could be. So we can get a series for this without having to start fresh and just derivatives, 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 derivatives. You could also just take derivatives, 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 and you would get you should get the same answer. I don't want to do that because it's taking too much. Okay. Um, Let's use that. So another thing that we can do in order to get other series from series that we know, well, it's a little more complicated to get the general terms, but suppose I just want at least the first few terms. So suppose I want the series for e to the x times sine of x. The derivatives, if I take them, are going to be a horrible mess because I use the product rule of things expand, expand, expand. But as long as we are in the region where both series converge, oh, I didn't point it out. If you do the ratio test on this, this converges for x between plus and minus 1. The endpoints are hard, they depend on the value of x. So I forgot to do this. So this is a good point. This, and it may or may not include x equals 1 or minus 1, depending on k. So suppose I have this. These folks converge everywhere. So it's OK to this. So the series for e to the x is x to the n over n factorial. And the series for the sign the odd powers of x, uh, that's the cosine, even powers of x, no odd powers, uh, uh, except the following. So if I could multiply these series together, then everything would be fine. Notice it's a little complicated to multiply these things together because this is like multiplying infinitely long polynomials. So let's just write out some terms and see what we get. So the first thing to e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, x cubed over 3 factorial, x squared over 4 factorial, the sine of x is 0 plus, so I get x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial blah 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 blah. So what is the first non-zero term of this series? Is, is there a constant term? No, it's not 1. It's 0. Because... Huh? Okay, the first non-zero term is not 1 either. Is it x? If I try to multiply these things together, then you foil it out, except it's not foil, it's sort of like foil. Because L is an infinity, and there's a lot of letters in between. I take the 1, I multiply it by the x, 
gives me an x. Then I take the 1. So then, then what is the next power that I get? Well, how can I get a power of 2? I can get a power of 2. None of, a 1 times none of these gives me a power of 2. Because the next power when I multiply by 1 is a cubic. But I can pick up a power 2 by multiplying this x times this x. And it gives me an x squared. Then when I multiply this x, this x times this x cubed, it gives me an x to the fourth. I'm not ready for that yet. But I will get an x cubed term. I need some color. So I'll use dotted lines. By that pair, 1 times minus x cubed will give me an x cubed. And then x squared times x will also give me an x cubed. This guy times this guy will also give me an x cubed. I should have written them in the other order, sorry. And then to get an x to the fourth, well, there's no, I will, when I take this x cubed times this x, it will give me an x to the fourth. There's no other way I can get an x to the fourth out of this. Because, you know, okay. So I will just get uh, this x cubed times this x to pick up the x to the fourth. And so on. So let me, I mean, you can just keep going. You want me to do a few more terms or are you okay? A few more? Or are you okay? Right? So this series is a little hard to write out the general terms. So this is, uh oh, this is a 2, that's a 3. So when I put this, uh, this gives me a 6. Minus 1 is a 5. And then I get an x to the fourth. 3 factorial. Okay? So this gives us at least the first few terms by multiplying things out. It doesn't give us a general formula because it's a little messy. Uh, x times, yes, what's the minus? Sorry. And then the fifth power will be coming from 1 times this and uh, x squared times this. Yeah. Okay. X, I'm sorry, are there two x to the fourth terms? Yeah. Uh, I only see x times x cubed. Oh, and the other one. Yes, you're right. Duh. See, I missed one. So I have x times this one, and then I also have this one. This one times this one times this one. You're right. So this is gone. You have to be a little more careful than I'm being right now to make this work. Okay? You want me to continue? Or is it clear? So, you just go power by power, and notice that eventually it stops. Right? We have to look at all the ways to add up to 3. All the ways to add up to 4. All the ways to add up to 5. And since I missed one, I got one wrong. But we can multiply. You can also divide series in this way. So you could, I'm not going to go through it, but we could figure out the series for the tangent by dividing the series for the sine by the series for the cosine. I'll do that in a bit. But I, you know, again, it, it's kind of messy. So you have to do long division of polynomials. Remember they taught you that in sixth grade and you maybe didn't even understand it? Well, can do that. So if you do long division of these infinite polynomials, you can get 
a series out. So we can do arithmetic with series as long as they converge. Uh, yeah. So one other thing that I'm going to mention uh, that I want to finish today, that I want to start, if you remember, for like the alternating series, for all of these series, we had an estimate, we had something that told us how far off will you be if you only take 10 terms, or 5 terms, or whatever. Right, so our series are infinite. So we have a power series like this. And we want to know what is the error. So this is some function. This is f of x. And I don't necessarily, I could do a Taylor series where I take a different center, still the same. So this is my function. And I want to know how far, how, how, how much off will I be? Let's give it a value. F of A B from if I stop somewhere at n terms, maybe I should use that. Term. numbers be? Well, the answer is kind of like the answer in the alternating series test, but not quite. So the, this is often called the, re, this is called the remainder. And the answer is, if we know a bound, we have a number, that tells us how big the n plus first derivative is, and we know the answer. So this is kind of like the other thing that everybody hated, the uh, error when we did the integral, the, the, the improper integrals, where you needed to know, no, I'm sorry, the Taylor series, or the, or the trapezoid rule, where you needed to know the k. This is kind of like the k. That. That is. So what this is saying, I'll have to do this. So if uh, n plus first derivative of x is less than some number m for x between 0 and a, then the remainder at this number a is less than f the value. The term you can use, but with the derivative of value with this m. So this is less than m over n factorial In fact, it's not just at A, it's at all of the X's. Less than A. Does that make sense? So if we can bound the derivatives, so another way that you might see this is that it's the term you can use, uh, the term you can use, Evaluated at some number <coughs> where C is the guy that makes it the biggest. C 
maximize it. I will say more about this on Friday, because obviously I ran out of time. So once we 